Hello and welcome to We Are Finn and I look back at day two of the Paris Air Show for 2019 and today we're going to be looking at what's taking off in the defence industry. And we're going to be looking into the future, especially when it comes to fighter aircraft. Dasso unveiled a full-scale model of its next generation fighter that it plans to develop with industrial partner Airbus. Defence ministers from France, Germany and Spain joined France's President Macron to commit to a framework to advance this future combat air system and signed an agreement to take the project to the demonstration phase. Dassault CEO Eric Trappier said it will shape Europe's most decisive military air combat program for decades to come and is a strong move in constructing Europe's sovereignty. Another full-scale model to have the covers ripped off is the fifth generation TFX, the Turkish fighter program. Manufacturer TAI's chief executive, Tamil Kotil, told me this will be the best of the European fighters. It's designed in cooperation with BAE Systems and first flight is expected in 2026. And the unmanned sector was once again in the spotlight with the Italian Prime Minister Conte coming here and helping to unveil the youngest brother of Leonardo's Falco family. Now the Falco Explorer is the largest drone manufactured by Leonardo and it's expected to make its first flight later this month. It'll carry a 350 kilogram payload and offers more than 24 hours of flight time endurance. The Explorer is not bound by ITAR and will be targeted at Coast Guards and emergency responders as well as the military market. And a lot of talk at the show has been about the business of business with mergers and acquisitions really at the top of the agenda. You're seeing a lot of consolidation sales, acquisitions, merger of equals, uh, as uh, we look for a fewer number of more qualified suppliers in the industry. And that has a lot to do with uh, the activity that we're seeing today. Daha, the French manufacturer of the TBM family, is already snuggling up close to the Kodiak 100 among news that it aims to acquire the utility aircraft manufacturer Quest Aircraft Company. This introduces a third single-engine turboprop to the Daha family to go alongside the TBM 910 and 940 and broadens its international footprint and manufacturing capability. And while Japanese manufacturer Mitsubishi was deflecting questions about its interest in picking off the last pieces of Bombardier's commercial aircraft business, it did admit that the global support business and experience in certification would be useful. The MRJ-90 is now rebranded as the Spacejet 90, but, but Mitsubishi Aircraft went further at the show with the unveiling of a Spacejet 100, a 76-seat original jet that meets US scope requirements and also adds space to add passenger experience with wider seats, larger baggage bins and in-seat connectivity. The company wants to challenge the dominance of Embraer in this sector. The Brazilian company is here though showing off its latest profit hunter livery, emphasising the aircraft's benefit to regional operators. The liveries are becoming an airshow talking point. This one features a high-tech stylized lion, while previous successes have been a tiger at Singapore, a shark at Farnborough and for Aerostana, a show leopard. The first was at Paris two years ago with an eagle's head. Now yesterday we told you about the all-electric aircraft called Alice, uh, made by Eviation. Today the company announced its first orders. Happy to say that the Cape Air, the world's largest general aviation operator uh, of, of commuter planes up in uh, Cape Cod and uh, the east coast of the U.S., uh, has committed to buying double digits of, uh, of this plane in the next five years. Uh, we are extremely excited with their commitment and with their, um, let's say, perception of operations. They are, as far as I'm concerned, the perfect client for us. Meanwhile, Collins Aerospace secured 1.5 billion US dollars in power control and aerostructures maintenance agreements from commercial aircraft operators, including its first MRO deal with Ethiopian Airlines. The 25-year, 500 US million dollar Ethiopian agreement covers maintenance of heat exchangers, air management systems, and fuel metering units on 60 de Havilland Dash 8400 turboprops. So that's it from us from Paris today. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking at supersonic transport and seeing what the latest news on that is. Yeah, and they're queuing up with more announcements and unveiling for tomorrow as well. You'll get all that news tomorrow. Find the latest, of course, online at wearefin.com. And we look forward to joining you tomorrow as well. Thanks for watching.